We just pulled up into camp here in Panama City at Sun Outdoors. Uh, this is the electrical cabinet of Clark. And uh, you can see this long reel. That's a 50 amp line that comes out on a, uh, it's got a nice little retract feature for when I pull it in. We'll show you that later, but that basically comes out and I pull my line over to my electrical. This houses my sewer lines, which I've already put in, thus holding used rubber gloves. Very important. So over here is our 50 amp electrical panel. And to that is a surge protector that I use to make sure that the circuit is good. If I get three good lights, which I test before I plug in the RV, I basically turn off the power, plug in that surge protector, turn the power on. If I get three lights, I turn it off. Then I plug in the RV, turn it back on, and we're good to go. So that has 50 amp coming into the coach, which is important because our air conditioners require 50 amp service to be able to run. Then I hooked up the water. So I've got two water filters. I've got one inside of the coach, actually technically three because I filter the water a third time inside. But this comes out of city water, comes through the water filter, comes right through here into the wet bay of coach of uh, Clark. And you see I'm pointed to city water, which means the water's coming directly in and can be used by all the inside sinks, the showers, and everything of the like. Here's that other water filter. So the water comes in through that filter, comes in through Clark, goes through this water filter, and then runs on in. Now I also have a separate Brita water filter. When I take water out of the tap, I basically pull it in uh, through the Brita water filter. So last thing I'm gonna show you right here is um, Clark's sewage connection. So we were boondocking, we were on the road for a while, so all the waste and everything goes into the black tank. All of the soapy water from the showers and the sinks goes into the gray tank. And then of course we have the fresh water tank, which is what we pull from when we're boondocking. So we take a shower uh, in a parking lot somewhere in Clark, you've got water to pull from that fresh water tank, but it all goes into the gray water tank. All the waste goes into the black water. So we were about 70% full when we pulled up into camp. So the first thing I did is I hooked up the sewer lines down in through the sewer, as you can see here. And a full service hookup. There is a uh, sewer line I connected. I have clear ends on both sides. Very, very important because uh, when you're emptying your tanks, you want to make sure that um, you can see what's coming out and that you are absolutely completed before you pull your, your sewage tanks. Now, I'm not going to pull my sewage hoses until I leave camp, uh, and then I'll dump one more time so I have nice, clear um, tanks. But you see, this is where you basically if I pulled that, it would empty the, the, the tank, the black tank first. I close it, and once the black tank runs out, I'm going to spare you the gory details. I then run the gray tank, and it washes through all of the black stuff. So I close the black one, open up the gray one, all the soapy water runs through that hose, and rinses out all the garbage that's in. At some point, I'll show you how I also cleanse the black tank uh, when I'm leaving camp. But... Uh, I'm not going to do that now. Just want to give you a quick setup of the things we do when we uh, set Clark up. I've already, by the way, put the, uh, the levels down so we got Clark nice and level. Next thing I'm going to do is open up the slides, but I don't open them up right away because I'm working under here and I don't want to keep ducking under hitting my head. So we're going to be opening the slides. I showed you how we did that yesterday and we're done. We'll check in later. Buddy, and welcome back to the incredible adventures of Clark. Here we are at uh, Sun Outdoors RV Resort in Panama City, Beach, Florida. So we left our four-legged friends this morning at that beautiful horse farm in Live Oak, Florida. To start our trek around here, it was probably about 11.30 this morning. Uh, and it was really nice starting my first conference call of the day at 8 a.m., looking over at this beautiful field and once again having some of our visitors at our door to visit my wife check this out chris somebody's looking for a treat too should i give him one <laughs> a dog treat drew tried hi guys <laughs> trick or treat <laughs> <laughs> look you got it Got a dog. 
<laughs> a mule. <laughs> a horse. <laughs> you can give one to Bailey. Just don't give the horse a treat. Well, I'm not going to give one to one and not to the others. Well, they're dog treats, not horse I treats. I know. Hi, oh, you're, going, you're not the puppy. You're the, you're the pony. <laughs> and a donkey. <laughs> Here comes another one. Another country heard from. Oh, hey, buddy. How are you? What's up, Bailey? How you doing, Bailey? You a good dog? <laughs> <laughs> well, after we had fun with our friends and we got back on the road, we had a, a brief stop along the way as I was running low on diesel exhaust fuel and uh, stopped at a quick rest, rest stop. I always carry DEF um, on board, so I was able to fill the tank in about 15 minutes, and then uh, we were on our way again. They come in boxes, um, and they're about two and a half gallons a piece. It's a 10-gallon DEF tank, so I... Uh, used uh, a few of those to fill up and we were in good shape. We had a nice easy drive on Interstate 10 uh, and then headed south on 231 towards uh, the Gulf Coast. So total drive time today was about uh, three and a half hours and about 213 miles and we used a bit less than a quarter of a tank of diesel fuel. You're good, thank you. Uh, somebody was afraid they were going to get into my camera. They were driving behind us. So, very kind people here in these uh, RV parks. So, um, we also had a, a bit of an issue today with our rear air conditioner. It was sort of raining water down on us, and this was unfortunately the unit that's over our bed. So, uh, woke up. Um, with uh, the covers all wet, and although I'm getting on in age, I didn't think I wet the bed, so I uh, had to actually look, and there was water coming down from the, uh, from the air conditioned unit. So we made a call on the way today to uh, Dalton and Kevin over at RV Express, and Kevin literally was waiting for us when we pulled into uh, the resort. Great service at RV Express. Uh, they come to you, and Kevin got in quick. He found the issue. And although he did not have the part to fix it completely, he solved the issue until the part comes in. If we get it before we leave on Sunday, great. If not, I told him, don't worry about it. Um, as we know, that uh, repair will hold till we get back. So check this out. Uh, check out Kevin helping us out uh, from RV Express. Right, here we are live, the adventures, the incredible adventures of Clark continue. And here's Kevin from RV Express. Hey, hey hi, Kevin. So RV Express, awesome business. So they do mobile RV repair. I called them earlier today. They were out. Kevin was actually got here before me, <laughs> and was uh, was was right out here. We had a problem with our air conditioner, um, and uh, Kevin came in and he's got a solution to it and he's ordering a part for us. So and uh, Oscar, who's loves Kevin uh, is very happy also Oscar's a good friend now. he is a good friend now so thanks Kevin and RV Express uh, you guys are awesome thank you all right let's talk about cannabis legislation and some odd facts very strange facts in the great state of Florida so Florida in the state of Florida cannabis in Florida is illegal for recreational use and uh, possession as a matter of fact of up to 20 grams about three quarters of an ounce is a misdemeanor uh, and it's punishable by up to a year in jail uh, a fine of up to a thousand dollars and suspension of one's driver's license uh, several cities and counties have enacted reforms to um, to apply lesser penalties, as we've seen in some of the other southern states like Georgia. Uh, however, um, it is still largely illegal. Uh, medical use was legalized in uh, 2016 by a way of a constitutional amendment uh, appearing on the ballot uh, at the time as Amendment 2. The initiative was approved with 71% of the vote, and that is essentially uh, medical. So 
you know, while uh, Florida voters enacted this medical cannabis program in 2014, um, Florida remains one of only 19 states that imposes jail time uh, for simple uh, possession. Now, here's the odd fact I was talking about. So this was actually sent to me, this uh, strange fact by our uh, VP of Compliance, Michael Boone, who helps me do a lot of the research. and uh, Incredible guy. We'll get a chance to meet him soon. Uh, but on October 16, 1933, 21-year-old Victor Licata used an axe to murder his parents, two brothers, and a sister while they were asleep. And despite evidence of Licata's pre-existing history of mental illness, uh, police and the press made, uh, you know, they basically made it all about the cannabis. They made unattributed claims that he was addicted to marijuana. And on October 17, 1933, the Tampa Bay Times wrote, in fact, this was W.D. Bush, city chief detective, said that he made an investigation prior to the crime and learned that the Slayer had been addicted to smoking marijuana cigarettes for more than six months. However, a day later, the chief of Tampa, Tampa Police Department downplayed the role the drug had in the murders, although he pledged himself to the cause of marijuana prohibition in the state. So he said, quote, maybe the weed only had a small indirect part in the alleged insanity of the youth, but I'm declaring now and for all time that the increasing use of this narcotic must stop and will be stopped. And that was quoted in the uh, paper in October 18th, 1933, so uh, many, many years ago. Uh, editorial that on the sixth page of the Tampa Morning Tribune uh, was entitled, Stop This Murderous Smoke. The editorial writer called for the prohibition of marijuana. It may or may not be wholly true that the pernicious marijuana cigarette is responsible for this murderous mania of a Tampa young man. Uh, in exterminating all the members of his family within his reach, but whether or not the poisonous, mind-wrecking weed is mainly accountable for the tragedy, uh, its sale should not be and should never have been permitted here uh, or elsewhere. So, the enemies of cannabis in the state used this crime to scare America into rejecting the plant. Uh, Harry uh, Anslinger, commissioner of the Federal Bureau of uh, Narcotics from 1930 until 1962, uh, abused this case to insist that marijuana usage caused insanity and criminality. Uh, in his highly influential 1937 article, Marijuana Assassin of Youth, he wrote about Licata and his crimes, and Anslinger reused the story during the testimony at the Congressional hearings for the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. So, and it's funny, I had a debate about the legalization uh, of marijuana with a police officer friend of mine, and he was very much against it. And, uh, and that's okay, this is America. We get to speak our minds and we all have a vote. Uh, but it was interesting when I asked him how many fights that he had uh, to break up because people were uh, drunk under the influence of alcohol. And he said, uh, well, a lot. Uh, and I said, well, how many uh, fights have you had to break up because people were high? He said, none, but I did get a big hug once. So, um, yeah, I just thought it was a funny story. And I know this is a hotly debated thing across the country. And, um, you know, Americans are uh, in overwhelming majority looking for this approval. But at Credible, we know that the majority of voters are looking for legalization, particularly on the medical side. But what we want to ensure is that the industry is safe. We want to see safety through the adherence of proper licensing, best practices and certifications, um, as well as complete transparency. We are committed to being the digital registry that is the single source for researching validated and verified brands on both the CBD, hemp, and legal marijuana industry. Um, and, you know, it's important. I've often uh, referred to, you know, this as like the gold rush of the 
1800s or the mid 1800s and how everybody wants to get rich but nobody wants to really do the right things um, and there are people out there doing the right thing so we want to focus on them we want to basically improve the industry through safety and transparency we're going to be here in panama city until sunday morning when we uproot camp and head to new orleans uh, and uh, to nola uh, and we'll check at least once tomorrow for a weekend wrap-up. So you'll probably hear from me once more for the weekend um, tomorrow on Friday. And, uh, you know, that'll be more of a fun, whim whimsical thing as we wrap up the week and get ready to give you coverage again back on Monday for, uh, for what we've done over the weekend and the fun that we've had here as the incredible... Adventures of Clark continue right here in Panama City Beach, Florida. Have a good night.